So the newest game from Bungie, Marathon, was just announced. And in this video, we're going to go over all the information that we learned of today. We're talking about the Vidog that was released. We're talking about the alternate reality game tied into the promotion of Marathon. The gameplay details and the little Easter eggs that we saw within the trailer as well. So if you guys enjoyed these type of videos, make sure you tap that like button as it is the best way to help with the video channel then all famous to eat. <laughs> Just like and subscribe, okay? That's what I'm trying to say. So first off, let's get the basics down. What the heck is Marathon? Well, it's a three-man squad extraction shooter that's PvP focused, which is definitely different from the main extraction shooters that we know when it comes to like Tarkov and DMZ from Call of Duty, where they throw in a little bit of PvE elements. They mention nothing about PvE within Marathon. It seems to be straight up player versus player. And this does look to be a live service type of game, probably very similar to what we've seen with Bungie and Destiny, but my probably strand away from the paid expansions things as they did mention seasons when it comes to the Vidoc. And the world that players will be jumping into is Tau Seti 4. It's a world that holds roughly 30,000 like humanoid kind of time. People will get into that a little bit later when it comes to the lore section. Gameplay wise, people will be jumping into a persistent world. The nearest comparison I can think of when I hear a persistent world when it comes to Extraction shooters would be something maybe like Plant Side 2, which is a game mode where just kind of think of like Battlefield but in space in a much larger scale. And there really isn't a beginning or an end when it comes to the games that people are playing. The games are just always on, people are always hopping in and playing. It's just up to you when you want to end your experience. Not like DMZ, where you queue up with players, jump into the map together, and then the match ends. At least that's the impressions that they gave within their Vidoc. You'll be playing as a runner who is a cybernetic cyborg, kind of cyberpunky, sci-fi kind of character. Kind of one of the things where like you don't really know where the human starts and the machine ends. And when it comes to your character, it seems like there will be some form of customization mentioned within the Vidoc. They specifically said it'd be able to represent yourself within the game. And when game developers say be able to represent yourself in the game, that means most likely some form of customization. They also mentioned the customization within the gameplay as well which if this is going to be a live service game you know that they're going to be doing microtransactions likely with cosmetics so that would make sense they also mentioned gameplay customization as well it seemed like you'd be able to modify your character in a way to be able to suit your play style in some kind of manner now they didn't quite state that there were classes but they kind of hinted at that but it seemed much more something that you build your character towards and it's all based off of loot that you find within the world Continuing on talking about customization, there was one section that they showed on the screen. It showed a weapon kind of put game pieces put together. Now this could just be them showcasing how they build weapons within the world, or it could be the individual pieces that you can customize, and those are the sections that they added on to that you can customize. Now we've had a little bit of weapon customization when it comes to say like Destiny, but this one looks to be much more full on like weapon customization to how you want to play, kind of like say like akin to Call of Duty's Gunsmith. Again, that's what it was hinted at, what we saw within the Vine document that we're talking about. Of course, we'll wait until we see some actual gameplay about it. They put a big emphasis on finding what they called artifacts, which are ways to just kind of combine one part an artifact to another one to build up something stronger this could be like some kind of crafting building tool to get you to some kind of higher form loot again this is all very high level stuff that was kind of brought up with it comes to the buy dog and information we got directly about the gameplay as well they mentioned something about an alien key so there might be some kind of hidden alien kind of mystery that was going on with this world as well seems very familiar that we've had previously with all Bungie games. There's always some kind of larger scale mystery that's beyond your character themselves. An interesting thing that they said that it'd be something that you can open up a whole new zone and it's up to you to figure out how to unlock that for all the other players within the world or server or something like that. That sounds really interesting. They also mentioned about it being like a world first might be a type of mechanic that we see like right now with Destiny, right? Where you have world first rage. You might have world first zone extractions. This might also kind of tie into what they mentioned about a player driven narrative as well. So it might be something that's kind of loosely put together, nothing full fledged that maybe we've seen like with Destiny or Halo or anything like that. This might be something a little bit more kind of just a vague continuity to kind of give you reasons to jump in to play the game again, kind of something similar to say like Apex Legends. One of the developers within the Vidoc talked about downing a player, but then letting them live. They started shooting me and I'm like, okay, <laughs> like I downed them and then I let them go. And that's the point, like I could play any way I want. She demonstrated her power and then she let them go. <laughs> so it seemed like very similar to what we have right now within DMZ for Call of Duty, where if you get shot enough times, take enough damage, get put into a down state, which then you can 
can be revived. Maybe there's a self revive mechanic within Marathon at the moment. That's all just kind of speculation, but it seems like there's going to be a way you get downed and then a way you can get be killed afterwards. And they also talked about leaderboards, like a way to kind of showcase yourself against your peers about how good of a runner you really are, which I will find to be rather interesting how they'll measure leaderboard skill and points. Because when it comes to extraction shooters, it's all about how long of a streak you really have. Because most of the times when you die, you get put to back to zero, you get reset in that loop of building your character back up happens again. Now, when it comes to the online functionality of Marathon, they mentioned very specific things like dedicated servers, which I think is pretty much the gold standard at this point right now. I would hope so, at least. <laughs> uh, disconnect recovery, which is huge when it comes, especially for extraction shooters work, because if you die, you're out completely. Call of Duty doesn't have that, but Marathon does. That would be pretty sweet. And they also mentioned a fog of war feature. They briefly touched on privacy and security. Essentially, this is their way of saying like, we're taking cheaters into consideration because with cross-play, cross-save also being enacted when it comes to Marathon, there's gonna be people trying to cheat in the game. And it's up to Bungie to be able to provide a anti-cheat that's strong enough to stop people from jumping in and doing this. Kinda comes associated with mainly free-to-play shooters, so Marathon might be a free-to-play seasonal live service type of game. Now, when it comes to the trailer, there's some interesting things I wanted to point out that might have been missed. Some overlarging things that were pretty easy to pick up, but just so everyone's on the same page, but some more minor things as well, which will also kind of tie into a little bit of the lore that they're building up with Marathon. First, take note of what's on this runner right here. You can see the number 40 on their back because once you actually play the trailer through, you see that the timer, it's actually a timer on the back of that player and it's counting down from 40. Now, why is this thing timing down? We're not quite sure. This could be the type of mechanic to where you actually put the pressure on the player to extract once they get some type of artifact or some type of loot because with the world being persistent and possibly never ending, then why would you create like what would be like smoke or a zone that would close in on people to take damage like we have in DMZ? Because you need to give players some sense of agency. If you don't, then there's going to camp and be weird. Now we have these micro bot worm type of animal looking things. We'll get into that a little bit later when it comes to the lore. There's a QR code, as you can see right here on this Robo Silk Worm, if you want to call it, which actually takes you to this website where the URL is called, I hope I pronounce this correctly, sekagucci-genetics.jp. And when you click into the center page here, it kind of goes into a lot of different aspects of this. Now it's all completely written in Japanese, but luckily with the new sense of technology that we have today nowadays, I'm actually going here and type and translate this page to English and give you different very bits, various bits of like and key important characters to this made up organization, right? In different aspects of it. So they talk about a cloning, their technology, their mission behind what this whole thing is about. It basically talks about like one cloning when it comes to creating these people who are like half cyborg kind of things. These little tiny like silkworm robots that will help kind of generate a few things right here. And just basically kind of showcasing what this company is all about. Like look how great our thing is within universe kind of stuff. I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but just know that it's there. If you guys want to look into it, link in the description down below. As you can see, here's a shot of all the little silkworm looking robot things, basically creating this cyborg human. And you can see they're kind of slowly coming to life. Effectively what they're doing is building out that runner that we see later on in this trailer that actually shoots the runner that our character is being the main focused on within this trailer. Now looking through, I tried seeing what was on the character's visor. It's very tough to see as it's a lot of motion blur with the whole thing, so I couldn't quite pick out what exactly they were running towards. My assumption would be some type of extraction point that's within the world of Marathon. Now, one thing I wanted to point out when it comes to this trailer is the simplicity of the art style. They just look at the weapons, very simple, very geometric, even the characters are well, like even though there's a lot of detail to the characters, still very simplistic in the designs. And when you take a look at what's around them, you see that the world that's surrounding them, these containers right here, are just simple spheres, nothing too crazy that's going on here. This is supposed to get obviously give you the impression of the art style, like what to expect when it comes to Marathon, but my assumption is that this world is going to be huge because if you're gonna have such a simple art style that's gonna be this smooth and less detailed, they're gonna have a world that's gonna be like this large right here that people are gonna need to jump in. That's gonna be a persistent world. So there's gonna be like some kind of trade-off when it comes to 
high level of graphical fidelity, but maybe a smaller world, or you go with low graphical fidelity in a larger world. It's all about how you manage your resources. Again, this trailer, the Vi doc that we got, was all extremely high level stuff. It's supposed to just kind of give you the vibes that you know, like, hey, we're Bungie, we're working on Marathon, it's an extraction shooter, and we'll let you know more later. Now, continuing into the ARG aspects of Marathon right now, we have their Twitter, obviously, 40,000 people follow them. That's pretty crazy. They are only following two accounts right now. Those accounts are being Bungie and Mida. Whoever the heck this is, when you click into it, they actually are also only following NASA and Marathon, the two people that they're following. And they actually just started tweeting out today when it comes to the content putting out with the hashtag somewhere within the heavens. Tweeting out things like, we gave you the tools, you've completed the code, but a cipher evades you? Maybe it's time to clock out. I think we just got inside information about what MIDA actually stands for. Malicious Insider Disrupts Agenda? Maybe. But on this Twitter page, an interesting thing, they have a link to hearoursilence.com. And when you click on that, this only works on desktop, by the way. If you go on mobile, you just get like a broken screen kind of thing. This weird pixelated image shows up here. And I have no idea what this is, but some people on the internet have a slight idea. Shout outs to the friend of the channel here, Halo.API actually extracted the data they said, very specifically saying that the data extracted from the image, you can grab it on yourself by this website here. And basically it gave him coordinates, which took him to <laughs> Muscle Beach Venice Hall of Fame. My assumption is this is some type of wall art that you can find that's over in Venice in some location. This is where we're starting to get into like the I Love Bees type of alternate reality game that we had back in Halo 2, kind of bringing that back for Marathon. So now you know all you need to know about Marathon. So now you're probably asking, okay, when can we play this game? We know it's a ways away, but how far away are we talking here? Well, Insider Gaming, aka Tom Henderson, who is quite known for his inside information that's rather accurate, actually shared this back in October of 2022 is when these leaks first came out that Bungie was working on Marathon as an extraction shooter. And well, he looked to be 100% right on this leak right here. So that's pretty crazy. And they stated right here that in 2019, Bungie CEO Pete Parsons suggested in an IGN interview that the studio will have a new game by 2025 and quoted saying so by 2025 we have a pretty specific path to make sure we transform destiny and that we have other franchises within the marketplace given how high level the information that we got today was and of the five doc that we are going to be quite a ways away before Marathon is playable within our hands. Interesting thing on their website, when you scroll all the way down though, it might actually show that we might have a chance to play this game a little bit early, at least for content creators. So hopefully I can throw it in here. If you go to the bottom of the page, it says creators and you click on this, it basically just tells you about to fill out your information and things like that. But they mentioned specifically here saying play, early access play testing as well as early preview information. So it sounds like they'll be working with the community when it comes to getting this game out, getting some feedback and seeing what people want and what they like about it. And hopefully us on the channel here can get some insider information about Marathon because as a longtime Bungie fan, been playing other games ever since Halo Combat Evolved, that, well, I'm a little excited about this. And that's everything we know about Marathon. If you guys like these type of videos, make sure you tap that like button, like I said earlier in the video. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you tap subscribe to stay updated with everything going on with Halo and now Marathon. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.